you drink more tea, your tea collection grows and now you have the need of writing tea notes. In this video, a comprehensive guide to write and organize your tasting notes. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nano Shan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you are new in this channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, make sure to click on the subscribe button and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoy watching the video. Today we are speaking about tasting notes and why we are doing so, not because the idea came to myself actually, but because Patrick, the customer of us, wrote me an email asking, actually suggesting to do this video and then I thought how I could have not thought about it uh, before that, such an important no uh, topic actually taking tea notes and let's have a look at which question actually Patrick came up with but before doing that please go ahead and do like Patrick if you have an idea of a video, a topic that you would like to deepen then just drop us an email info at nanoshan.com propose it and if we feel we have something to tell about the topic, the topic I will be more than uh, happy to do a video about that. And uh, uh, Patrick question where he was asking do you have some way of documenting your tea tasting so that you know what tea to return later? What system do you use? Pen, paper, an app on the phone, online notepad, etc. What form of notes do you recommend for beginners? What type of note should I take? So, now, based on the suggestion from uh, uh, Patrick, I actually I will address all these questions in this, uh, in this uh, video, but I will do it not only for beginners, also for tea experts. And for doing so, I will uh, tell you a few different methods that there are out there for taking tea notes so that you can pick up the one that actually better meet your needs. So first of all, let's start speaking about tea experts. What do tea experts do when they take tea notes? And with tea experts I mean maybe not necessarily experts but people that drink a lot of tea or have been drinking a lot of tea for a lot of time, from a long time. Well, you might be surprised or not but tea experts don't really take note very often. And the reason for that is that they have been drinking tea every day for many years and as you don't take notes every time you drink and you eat a meal, they don't take note every time they drink tea. Nonetheless, there are exceptions to that. There are exceptions for people that are really into database and I will offer also some example for them. You have also exemption where, for example, you have to choose between tea, like uh, professionals, like uh, if I go to the tea plantation, I have to choose between tea, then I would use, um, certainly I would take some tea notes and also in large tea company, the tea taster would use, uh, um, would use to take tasting notes to, this, to this decide which tea to go. So, uh, let's have a look at uh, maybe two examples of uh, uh, tea expert, let's say, or pretending tea expert uh, that take note. I take my note on a moleskin because just I like it and I take this moleskin and actually have a few of them. This is the last one always with me when I visit the tea plantations. So, uh, I have actually selected for you two notes that I took during one of my last trip. And uh, uh, let's start with this one here. So here I actually have tasted different type of tea from the same producer and honestly I didn't like them. So you see that for example in the first note is about the longing I say it's a bitter flat KO. It's written in Italian but that's the translation. The one in the center is a Tieguanyin and there I write is too green and acid. Uh, the three that I, I, I drank yesterday are more balanced although actually I even didn't like those three. And then there is, a, for example, the last one, Jinju Mei, is kind of acceptable if cheap, but it is actually too, um, I don't know how to translate this Italian word, stopposo, is when it's uh, kind of chewy, maybe, even though it's tea, but kind of chewy, let's say. 
And then um, I have some other notes here. So just to show you an example of notes of a tea that I like. Here I actually was drinking uh, five different Guju Zilson, so five different tea of the same type from the same producer. The difference was only in the quality of the leaves and the harvest time. The cheapest one was 10 times cheaper than the most expensive. And let's see what I wrote about the cheapest one. Here I write that it is a different processing. With that I mean is different than the traditional processing for Guju Zilson. Not bad for the price. Strong but it turns bitter. And now maybe let's have a look at the fifth one, the um, most expensive one. And for that I wrote much better, much superior, of much superior quality and extremely sweet and rich. So, as you see for these uh, tea notes that I take, they are actually very uh, simple and straight. Uh, I don't have to describe about Guju Zisun, how Guju Zisun taste because I know that. I just want a few keywords to understand if it is a tea worth buying and if it would be you if it is a tree worth uh, um, drinking in the future or actually even buying also from the same vendor. So uh, I have another example for you. This was just myself but just to pick up another tea expert that actually is doing a review of poor He's tasting many different pours, and here I have actually in front here on my screen are uh, a few um, two reviews that he made. The one, the first one, is about a wild shampooer that is sourced from a farmer. It means I've never seen a factory, and it also been pressed by the farmer. If it was a pressed tea, I don't know. Um, it's writing that it's mild for being a wild tea. It's super aromatic, long lasting, and good change. Meaning it is a uh, uh, there is a lot of change between the different brewings. Fabulous tea. So he's pretty excited about this tea and you see it goes very much in the detail. It doesn't have to tell how a shampooer tastes, it doesn't have to tell uh, how a wild shampooer tastes, it just say mild for be a wild shampooer. Then uh, the another tea that he tasted is a tea that he didn't like, also from a farmer and pressed it into a bamboo cane. And he's writing, leaves partially cut in small pieces and a strange note of tobacco. Otherwise, relatively okay. But generally speaking, not a good thing. All right, so as you see, tea expert goes straight to the point. If you are a tea expert, I'd, you know, and you don't have this idea of going too much systematic into your tasting, just a few notes is fine. But let's give you another example of an approach that is more um, there are more, more content to it and more guidance. And for that I've chosen actually this uh, booklet here. It is 33 leaves of tea. I found it here in the US and uh, um, it's nice. It's 33 pages and each page you can take note of a specific tea. I bought it because I was considering buying it for Nanoshan. Then I realized that with the higher taxation in Europe and with the shipping cost, we should sell this for eight euros. Then I wasn't sure if the price would be okay. In the US, you can buy for five dollars plus taxes. So at the end, I didn't uh, uh, purchase it for Nanoshan, but I have still here. So let's have a look inside. Now, as you see here, it is very compact. It is uh, for true, so there is a lot of data. For example, uh, you have even uh, uh, brew statistics in the uh, bottom left corner, so it's fairly complete actually. The aspect that I like a little bit less is related to the flavor wheel that you see in the bottom right. Why? The flavor wheel in itself, I like the idea of the flavor wheel and the idea that once you have um, put all your dots, you can see by looking at the shape of the, um, the line that you have drawn in which direction the taste goes. The problem with this flavor wheel is that as you see they mix it up different aspects of tasting. So you have both uh, basic taste like sweet, you have the uh, typical tasting note like woody, uh, fruity and so on. You have also uh, intensity that is mixing up and aroma. So to me it's difficult because then you have on the same level basically different aspects of the say of the taste that you cannot really um, how to say compare with each other while the flavor wheel is meant actually to compare things. But nonetheless I actually like the um, 
the approach that they have in here it gives you also a lot of space for taking your keynotes so that's an option for you and uh, i mean you have seen it now on the screen so if you want you can take also uh, notes of it and make your own template or if you are in the us it's just five dollars and it's really worth uh, uh, buying I, my opinion so now let's uh, speak about uh, something else we have seen now tasting notes in these tasting notes we actually describe the taste but what like patrick has asked what if we want to know if uh, in the future we should go back to this tea drink it again bite it bind it again or not and we are not interested in the flavor profile we just want to know for our reference well in that case i suggest actually to follow the approach suggested here by um, jens denning that wrote this book i presented this book already in uh, in a previous video and here in the section about tea tasting it shows you actually um, a way of uh, judging tea according just to five different possible uh, levels so you have if it is a minus it means the word doesn't deserve that tea if it is a plus it's decent quality but actually you would not buy it again and then there is one two and three stars if you give one star then you say it's good quality i would buy it again but it's not one of my favorite if it is two star it's really a great tea if i can get it for a good price i would buy it again and if it is three stars it means that's a fabulous tea and i would give out almost any money for uh, having that tea so as you see it's less complete than the other one but it serves a different purpose and if this is your purpose then i would say uh, just uh, go for it is a easy way doesn't take a lot of time very minimal but it brings you to uh, your um, target basically so now let's speak about another aspect that patrick have asked should you write uh, your notes on paper like i do or should you use a kind of app online or making your own template uh, and writing notes on the computer well, there are apps out there and uh, without uh, spending too much time, at least I will put a link to one in uh, the description below. But uh, generally speaking for me, I personally prefer to customize my tasting notes, so I do it myself. And uh, <clears throat> nonetheless, there are apps out there. The big advantage of the computer is not for me that you can use an app, is more the fact that uh, you can sort out things. So you can, for example, do a spreadsheet on your tablet, on your computer, in Excel, in Numbers, a Google Sheet. And then you can sort uh, in the future when you have a long list, you can say, let's see which tea are fruity that I like. You sort them, you filter them, and then you can have a specific comparative tasting only about those fruity teas. Or you can review the characteristic of those. So it's very good for learning. And I suggest uh, these more for beginners and intermediate drinker and definitely also for those of you that are just into database so paper on the other side is another advantage the fact that when you drink tea like i'm doing right now you not necessarily want to have a computer next to you it's kind of disturbing one thing is that if you are working on the computer and the tea is bringing you company basically but if you are dedicated to the tea to me is of disturb of having a computer or a laptop next to me i prefer to use paper and if you use paper and then you want to write on the computer it takes some time because you have to rewrite the things later on so both options are fine if i have to give a suggestion for me beginners why not use a spreadsheet on the long term you will see if this is the way you want to stick with but you will certainly learn a lot from it and if you're already an expert and you don't really are into all this spreadsheet, just go straight. Uh, but I suggest adding something physical and uh, together like this, where you have several pages and you can easily access your notes. They are then ordered by date. And usually, at least me, I always remember easily when I tasted a specific uh, tea. All right, so this was about paper versus computer. And now, let's speak about another aspect all these different uh, options that i gave you are somewhat incomplete i mean the 33 leaves of tea is fairly complete for the size but is also small you don't have all the aspects of the taste in it so if you want really 
to approach the tasting like professionals do and I mean professional when they have to choose tea so for example as we said before a tea taster in tea companies they get a lot of sample and they have to decide you really want to go through every single aspect of the tasting and actually I have one example for you when I did the video together with John where we tasted I think eight different yen cha then I prepared the template for us to evaluate the different tea based on the classical professional tea tester approach and also uh, there is actually also a series of four videos that I made not one four about professional tea tasting so you see if I made four video about the topic there is a lot to say if you want have a look at that but at the end when I started searching for for a uh, template of a tasting note complete in the way I meant it with all different aspects in it I couldn't find it so what I did I made it myself and I have it here that's my uh, personal tasting uh, note template and uh, um, I also made some instruction here and it's fairly complete I mean three pages of instruction I made and this is actually because I wanted to evaluate always in the same way since this is quite uh, dense of information and there is no instruction if in the future I want to double check what did I mean by this and that then I can check in the instruction and I will tell you soon how you can get this for free is um, not difficult but uh, let's have a look at what I put actually in this template and I say I find it fairly complete but if you have any suggestions or things that you think might work better in a different way just give me feedback and uh, uh, it's quite easy to change so I have at the very top I have uh, the name of the tea and the date when I tasted the tea plus an overall rating very simple from one star to five star and then I have a general section with information I want to record everything possible about the tea the type of tea let's say oolong the um, um, uh, group, the, the type of tea, let's say oolong, the group, so for example if it is a yen cha, a ui rock tea, the cultivar, if uh, it is a chidan, the origin, ui shan, and so on, the harvest day, then I have information about the vendor, the price, when it was purchased, and also important, how did you steep the tea, the quantity of leaf, the type of water, how many brews you have done, and the temperature. And then it comes to really the section about the tasting, and here I have basic tasting so basic taste sorry so it um, an evaluation about uh, sweetness sourness saltiness uh, bitterness and umami of the tea also dedicated section to intensity and texture separated from each other and then you have a section about the aroma aroma of the dry leaves of the wet leaves and of the liquor of the tea soup and then finally the taste also here grouped in different uh, uh, groups effect on the body and at the end some free notes to take you don't have to feel all the fields um, it might be overwhelming but if you want to do so you can do and uh, um, actually you know there are no copyrights you can uh, just uh, uh, take that and if you want to copy and make it in a spreadsheet so you can then sort things on your computer uh, feel free to do so and if you want to get it I mean a very simple next time you place an order at the very end uh, when uh, you reach checkout there is always the question that is asked to you is who introduced you to Nanoshan just reply please send me the template of the tea tasting note and we will take the email that you always have to put when you place an order and send you the template and that's pretty much actually all I wanted to tell you today I hope I've covered a range large enough of different uh, way of uh, taking tea tasting notes if you know more than that if you have any suggestion about apps that you use and you want to suggest to other please write that in the chat below and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet and to give us a thumbs up if you have enjoyed watching this video. Thanks a lot and I will see you at the next video. Bye bye guys!